song. Do you love God today? Love Jesus, my soul. Love Jesus. If you love God, just wave your hand at it. My soul. You that are watching tonight, wave your hand. Love Jesus. Bless, bless his name. What we doing? We urging God in all day. We just tell him to come on in. I love him. That's all we doing. We inviting him in all day. I love him. Do you love God where you are all day? I love him. Bless his name. If you love him, say it all day. I love him. All day, I love him. All day, I love him. Bless his name. Father, we truly thank you. We thank you. We bless you tonight, God. We praise you. Tonight, we give you glory tonight. We honor you tonight. We bind up the adversary tonight. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God glory. Somebody give God honor. Somebody tell him thank you. You all that we need you to be, God. Walk in this class tonight. Fill us up, God. Let our cup run over, God. Somebody give God a shout and say, run it over, God. Somebody run it over tonight, God. Whatever I need you to do, do it in this house tonight. Now, God, I give you praise. I give you glory for you dropping by, for you fixing things, for you turning, for you mending things, for you causing death to be free, God, for you causing body to be healed. Somebody tell God thank you. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, we give you praise. We give you glory, and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Somebody said, in Jesus' name. Repeat after me, I decree and I declare that on this night, whatever I petition God for, it will come to pass. Somebody give God a praise like it's already done. Give God a praise. Like victory is already done. In Jesus' name, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I feel something is about to happen in here. I feel that whatever we have going on, the devil is going to be broken this night. I feel that ever, whatever been going on in your mind, it's going to be a breakthrough tonight. Now, if you believe God, throw your hand up in the air and say, I trust you in that decision, God. My God, my God. I didn't go through with the confession of faith because I feel a different anointing on us. So I'm just going to walk it like God said, walk it. Oh, God. Tonight, I don't know, for some reason, I felt like God was getting ready to counsel some stuff. I, I don't know what it is, but I feel a cancellation is getting ready to start in this house starting tonight. And I need you to look at your neighbor and say, whatever going on, tonight is your cancellation night. Whatever you've been petitioning God for, it's getting ready to happen. 
And wait a minute, I'm going to do it like the prophet's supposed to do it. I'm going to decree it and declare over this ministry now that whatever you need God to do, it is done. Oh, God. Y'all sit down. Let me work this lesson tonight. It, it seems like the devil been trying to work in areas that every time I look around, every time I'm trying to get God in forefront, look like the devil been working, tied up, fighting, trying to hit this, trying to hit that. But somebody said, I still got my joy. I don't care what it look like. I still got joy. My God, my God. Y'all sit down. Let me work this thing. Is something good getting ready to happen? My test been turned up. Everything that can happen have been just look like every time I look around, something going on. And I said, God, what are you doing? I'm setting you up. How many of y'all feel like you're being set up tonight? I need to talk to you that got a set up on your life. How many of y'all got a hit man on you? How many of y'all know the devil been put a hit out on you? But tell the devil I'm here in Psalm 91. So whatever you got to do, you can't find me because I'm in Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. So somebody need to tell your devil, I'm here tonight. All them bullets you've been shooting at me, they just going to bounce off because I'm up on the Psalm 91. Mm, come on. Yeah, I said, now, I got, I, I got anointing one that can't wait tonight. I come to destroy some yokes tonight. I come, to, I come against this devil that been fighting us in our hell, been fighting us with our mind, been fighting us with bill, been fighting us with the surrounding, been fighting us through people. Somebody need to holler, God, I thank you. If the devil ain't picking on you, he already got you. My God, my God. Y'all sit down and let me work it. Come on, first lady. When you're getting ready to walk into your blessing, the trial turns up. Now, if you got things going easy, that means that you ain't finna get no blessing. But if hell is broke loose, you better get your praise on. You getting ready to walk into a door. If that devil been turning up your eye, your avenues are going through, you better give God a praise. You getting ready to walk into your victory time. Uh-huh. Somebody tell the devil, uh-huh. Y'all sit down, let me work a little farther. Let me work a little farther. Would you look at somebody real crazy and tell them, say, you next tonight. And tell them, said the next is now. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I just said. I just gave y'all a prophetic word. I told you your next is now. Not tomorrow, it's now. What you've been facing coming now. What you've been going through now finna step in. Now unto him that is able. I feel like teaching tonight. I feel anointing about to explode in this place. He attacked me with all types of stuff. And y'all think I'm coming in here and being content without a praise? Somebody holler, like, give me my praise back. Y'all sit down, let me work it, let me work it, let me work it. Y'all sit down for it, let me work it. Get your mic first, lady. Because I want them to hear what God finna do. Point your hand at somebody and tell them, say, this is a good night for you to walk into your victory land. It ain't by coincidence that God let you come tonight because it's going to be some stuff broken tonight. Oh, God. You got it, first lady?
Ajá. And that's all right. If you had to go back to it, that's all right. We'll go back to it again. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, the author and creator of all things. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament reveals God in the first manner uh -huh. by manifesting his nature, character, and dominion. The gospel in the New Testament give us knowledge of God, mm -hmm. the Father, showing the relationship from God to Jesus, the Father. I represent him as the Father in the Godhead. And Jesus himself, the Son, St. John 15 and 8. But before you go to the Son, let me deal with that Father. Look at somebody and say, Dad is in the house. I, I, I'm finna say something that's gonna literally blow y'all mind. When 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 mama, when children was acting up, you to beat them all day and like they wouldn't do. You what the first thing you said, your dad is on his way. When he get here, I'm gonna let your daddy deal with you. And, and that authority from daddy begin to call fear in that child because they know daddy being is different than mama being. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Well, can I just tell you, daddy is coming home. When I said daddy coming home, the father is getting ready to take his rightful place. And when daddy gets there, that means that everything got to back up. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, mama got that and she done did all she know I do. Sit down, boy. Don't do that. Don't do that. But soon the dad walk in. What I told you, boy. That authority. Look at your neighbor and say, I got authority now. I don't care if you're a lady, if you're serving the God that I serve. When you talk to him, say, my daddy said I can have it. Wait a minute, hold on, break it down a little bit further. When you go in a good name, you ain't got to have credit. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I, I ain't talking to you. When you got a good name, a good name, what the Bible said about a good name? Huh? It's rather to be chosen. And great rich when your name is, is when your name go out there before you and you ain't got to even said that, people gonna know you cause you got the name on you. Uh oh, uh oh. Now, since you got the father name on you, what are y'all being sad about? Why are you being down when the father is stepping in? Uh-oh, come on, deal with me, daddy. Somebody said, my daddy coming now. All my credit loop was uh, jacked up from the floor. Didn't see how I was going to get through it. But today, I, that's the reason why when you pray, the Bible said, our father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Honor, see, you got to understand, you got to honor the Father. When you pray, the first thing you say is, Father, in the name of Jesus. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Oh, y'all oh, oh. oh, didn't hear what I just said. That's the reason why things ain't been working. You've been trying to go everybody else's name, but you're supposed to say, Father, in the name. Look at your name and say, get your right protocol. Father, in. What is the word in? In is a prepositional phrase that surrounds Jesus. When you honor the Father, he brings in Jesus. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Well, I'm trying to, y'all, see, I'm already, the, the Lord is pouring in, so I, I'm trying to receive as he give it, and as he pouring in, I'm trying to give it to you. So, the Father's job is to go before. Come on, first lady. I, I don't want to move too fast. Come on. Mm. Showing the relationship of God to Jesus, 
Uh -huh. As father, a representing him as the father in the Godhead. Wait a minute. The father is representing Jesus. Wait a minute. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ain't by yourself. You got a representative. When Jesus come, Jesus always pointed back to the father. So, I'm trying to tell you, when Jesus comes, he got back up. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Wait a minute. You going into the grocery store, your mind have been finding that weed. You need to go in with your enforce. Uh-oh. Father, in the name of Jesus, send help before I go in the grocery store. Send help. I need my life be paid. Father, in the name of Jesus, I need my door to be open. Oh, that's how you got to talk to him. And then when you get just put the closing, Father, I thank you for what you're about to do. I'm already setting my fault, my plate, and everything out, so I'm expecting my plate to be filled. In Jesus' name. And let everybody say amen. amen. And then when you say amen at the door, there's somebody knocking and say, I was getting ready to pass your house, but for some reason, some drew me in. You knew what drew them in. It was in the name of the Father. The... Oh, God, let me, y'all sit down. Let me, let me walk a little, little gentle with this. Come on. Uh -huh. That son, St. John 15 and 8, uh -huh. 14 and 20. Jesus also gives God the di distinction of the fatherhood to all believers. He do what, baby? God, oh, let me take it back. Hold on. Mm. Take your time. God the distinction of the fatherhood to all believers when he explains God in the life of your father in heaven. Before you go there, first lady, so everybody in here has an extension. So when you go before the Father, Jesus makes sure that the extension that going to connect you is already in the midst of you. So what I'm trying to tell you, when you got a need, all you got to do, Father, in the name, when you get in the name, that extends. What did David say? David said, Father, he said, I lift my eyes unto from which coming my help. My help coming from the Lord. So once you learn what your extension is, how many of y'all know how to get to where you need to go? Break it down, bro, Pastor. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Now I said A, B, C. See, that's what's happening. See, when you learn what your ABCs are, when you learn what the word said, that's what extend you to what you need to go to. The devil said, the, the Bible said, we have, we don't have because we have, we don't have. Because, and then when we ask not, I got to slow it down, y'all. Y'all excuse me. I'm excited, y'all. Y'all excuse me. That's the reason why the devil know that he got you because you know you know what the word said, but you get into a, 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 a tight tongued motion. You can't can't, can't can't get it out like you want it, so you get tight tongued. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God got a tongue that he straightens out. Sometimes the devil know when you get tight tongued because when you go to pray, Father, I, 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 I 
thank you. Uh, 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 see, the devil already slipped in because you ain't getting them out. But when God began to come in, he called the tongue to be twisted back to a straight tongue. Uh oh, oh boy, y'all ain't gonna. Let. See, when Moses got tired tongue, God sent Joshua. He took Avery and caused him to come in and be a spokesman. So when you don't know a God got somebody that got you. Oh, y'all don't hear me. When you don't know your information, God got somebody right in the way that knows what to say in order to get you to where you need to go. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. My God. Come on, first lady. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all, when I get excited, I get, I start going fast. Come, come on, first lady. Uh-huh. Wait a minute, hold on. That mic, I, I, you, you think you could love it. Herein is my Father glorified. Uh-huh. See, what I'm doing while you're in your process, I'm letting fruits being multiplied in. So when you're going through, it ain't that you're going through, going through, but I'm putting some stuff in you. So next time you know you're going to have an extension. Wait a minute, hold on. Let me, let me, go, let me go to football lane. What is Sunday? Super Bowl. Why y'all think it's called the Super Bowl? Huh? The fanatic of the football. This is the, this is the last event for the NFL. This is the best of best coming together. Wait a minute. Hold on. Look at the neighbor. It's a neighbor. This is my Super Bowl night. The best of best coming in the house tonight. Jesus and the Father is coming in your house. And he going to show you that it's going to be a Super Bowl. Wait a minute. Hold on. So if we're going to have Super Bowl, we're going to need to have some refreshments. So uh, in the natural Super Bowl, they got hot wings. They got Rotel dip. They got pizza. They got those little finger sandwiches. Who? Tater chip. All types of chip that lines it up. And then you got most of all, you got cheerleader, hollering, and all the other stuff. Well, let, let, let me break it down to the spirit side. The word is going to be our rotel. Every time you dip in the. <laughs> Every time you need God to do something, you're going to dip. Some of y'all like the cheese to be melted. Oh, God, y'all don't. Even. When the devil come in as a flood, God going to have to melt some stuff. Oh, God, oh, God. Wait a minute. Then you got the chicken wing. And you know you got what we call the hot wing. You got the barbecue wing. And then you got the regular wing. Well, prayer life that you got, going to either let it be hot or it's going to be lukewarm or you're going to be cold. So if you want God to show up, get hot wing. Look at the name and say, I need me some hot wings. See, hot wings, you're going to have to find some water to drink with it. Oh, y'all don't hear me. How many of y'all brought your thirst? How many of y'all brought your water tonight? Uh-oh, uh-oh. See, one thing in the word of God, when you drink of him, you ain't going to thirst no more. Oh, God. Come on, first lady. Y'all sit down. Y'all making me move too fast. <laughs> we go on to John 14 and 20. Uh -huh. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, 
And ye in me, and I in you. Okay, we finna put it together. It's gonna be my father. It's gonna be me. And I'm gonna put you in the equation. It's gonna be the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. And you're gonna be put in the middle of it. I'm not going to let you be at the end. I'm going to put you in the middle of it because I want to make sure when the enemy comes, you are inside. You're covered. So, what's the other stuff? Okay, you got Rotel Dip. What's, what's, what's in the Rotel Dip? Hamburger, cheese, chili, Rotel. You got a little mixture of everything. All depends on what you like your Rotel to be. Okay, so now when the word of God comes in you, it's a mixture of all types of stuff. You got faith, hope, peace, long suffering, meekness, temperance. All this stuff is mixed in your rotate. Patience. All this stuff. All you got to do when you feel like you need to uh, dip. Dip it in. And if you got somebody that come and get on your nerve, dip a little patience. Somebody just bless you out, dip a little temperance. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my God, my God. Y'all, y'all didn't hear me. How many of y'all got Rotel dip tonight? Oh, you got to tell somebody when you go home, say, I've been to Super Bowl tonight. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. I've been to Super Bowl, Super Bowl, and we start letting new direction. I, I, how many of y'all going for the Eagles? How many of y'all going for the chief? But let me tell you something. Look, ask your neighbor question. Say, why did he ask who we going for? See, on that side, that's my natural side. But y'all know who I'm really going for? Sister, sister Talitra. We we dealing with Rotel dip. We, if you don't mind, you, you want to take some Rotel. Get your right hand and dip it. Get your, now you got to pull your mask down and eat it. Okay, all right. I, I'm gonna spice it up a little bit. Look at your neighbor and say, "Spice it up, Pastor." And sometimes when Rotel dip, some of y'all like to put peppers in there. Uh, what what you call them? Uh, them jalapeno peppers, y'all like them hot peppers to spice it up. Some of y'all can't stand the, uh, the pepper be, or the sauce being too high, so you like the mild stuff. Wait a minute, I'm finna blow y'all mouth. So when the Holy Ghost get there and the Holy Ghost be hot, how you gonna deal with it? How you going to deal when the Holy Ghost get there? You're going to have your hot Rotel deal with some peppers in it. How you going to deal with it? Some of y'all say, I, 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 don't like I don't like them peppers, but you got the whole, I, I want to bring it back to the dip. See, you want the Holy Ghost to be there with you, so you're going to have to make sure, okay, God, I, I got uh, acid reflux. So I can't stand when stuff too high. It make me get nauseated. See, I'm so glad that you brought that before my attention before I gave my next one. I don't know why God leave me like this. I, I don't know what God doing. He set me up to get blessed tonight. So what God began to tell me, though that guy as a reflux, and if you take some too high, it make the nauseation or the acid come up. What, what's the name of that pill you can take to get rid of the acid? Bretonic. I, I, I'm hearing different one. Here, let me. Bretonic. Who? Belt. Belt. I, I, your mask, I can't hardly hear you. Oh, Bill. Okay, I got you. So what? 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 I'm, reason why I had you to name the medicine? Because everything that God put in it, 
it's going to work all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and call according to so when you got as a reflux or whatever you may want to call it God will give you a medicine that will fit in this word will fit into whatever Y'all name difference of medicine, but every medicine that you name is befitting for what you need. Some of y'all can't take protonic. Some of y'all can't take the other medicine. So God's word comes in and know what you need because he said the word of God is medicine unto my flesh. Come on, first lady. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Matthew 6 and 8 said, Uh huh. Be not ye therefore like unto them. Uh huh. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Now, God knows what you need before we ask. And this is what bothers me. We, as being believers, get into a panic situation. And we begin to tell God what you had done, but you got to ask God to open your eyes so you can see what he already doing. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm starting to feel a flash come on. God is sending our blessing, but what's happening is when he sends it, we got to get out of the way so we can see the process. He already got the blessing. Wait a minute, hold on. I'm going I'm I'm to blow your mind. You already blessed. So, Philip, all you wait is manifestation to get there. God have already prepared what you need already. All you got to do is stand there and wait on God. Receive it, but wait patiently. Why do God not answer a move swiftly? Because he wants you to be able to have waiting power. Sometimes God will not give it because there's some things that need to be worked out the way so God can manifest what he needs in your way. Father, I don't know. You, 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 you didn't do me right. Everybody being blessed but me. He saved the best for last. It don't mean that he passing you by. He got a set time. He's setting you up. Hold on. Let me, let me walk my blessing. I'm finna walk it. Watch this. Here I go. I'm coming in the house. Blessing like you ain't got there yet. You keep going to the mailbox and ain't nothing got there yet. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways. Acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. And see, that's the problem. It's it, 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 like it's taking too, too long. And God, I'm going to have to go fix this car. You you ain't answering me. It's been two weeks, and you ain't, I ain't heard nothing. It's been three weeks, and nothing ain't happened. I ain't heard no letter. I ain't heard nothing. So you get into a panic attack, and you start calling the folks because you said feel like they should have been called you. But see, when God got a plan, you got to just wait while God working the plan. He trying to put the right person that will interview you in the right place, and you trying to hurry God and get that mean one that ain't going to take time to interview you properly who I'm talking to. I don't know. I've been praying. I've been fasting. God ain't nothing happening. It ain't time. He's shifting. He moving stuff. He got to make sure when you get there, nobody that will hinder you going to be there. Okay, how you going to work it, God? Since you rushing God to get out of the way, he'll go ahead and speed the course. Now you got all the hell is in where you need not for them to be. They there with you. And now you're saying, God, why did you put, you told them that you weren't going to put no more on me than I can bear. But guess what? You rusted. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
You weren't patient enough to wait till God finished. How many times you dealt with hellish people in your life and you said, God, how long are you going to let this be? That person was sent there for a reason. It was some stuff in you God had to get out. And he had to use that person to get it out. And you'd be like, God, I don't know why. I don't know why. Why you sent Jack and May in my life? Jack and May was sent there to get the hell out of you. I don't know. God, oh, Jesus, that much. Oh, Lord. Every time I look around, Jack and May always saying something to hurt my feelings. That means that God said you ain't mature enough. If you can't grow up and take what God sent your way, you ain't ready for the blessing. If you're going to be a millionaire and you don't know how to budget a dollar, you ain't going to be a millionaire. Mm-mm, boy. Success don't come to people that say I want to be set success. You got to work for success. A lot of people ask me a question, say, Pastor, how you get alone? I, I, I'd have went through. I'd have been denied. I'd have been rejected. I'd have been talked about, been lied on, been isolated, didn't want to be around me, all that kind of stuff. And now since God has bring me to the forefront, all that stuff was building me up to the platform. Look at your neighbor and say, are you ready for your platform? If God going to bless you, you got to go through your platform. Come on, first lady, I got to go a little farther. Push your neighbor and say, are you ready, neighbor? Are you ready, neighbor? Come on, first lady. We go to the son. We believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, the second person in the Godhead of the Trinity, uh-huh. a triad Godhead. We believe that Jesus was and is eternal in his person and nature as the son of God who was with God in the beginning of creation, St. John 1 and 1. We believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin called Mary, according uh-huh. to the scripture, thus giving rise to our fundamental belief in the virgin uh-huh. birth and to all of the miraculous events surrounding the phenomenon. St. Matthews 1, 18 through 25, we believe that Jesus Christ became the suffering servant. Mm-hmm. To man, this suffering servant came seeking to redeem man from sin and to reconcile him back to God, his fathers, Romans 5 and 10. Hold, hold on right there. Y'all think that he got to be the son of God just to be the son of God, just to be set on the son? Y'all about up. He had to go through the process. I need you to look at somebody and say, your process is before you now. This is before you now. And so many times in the church, when God sent a process, are you going through, you look at God and you ask God, how long before this is over with? Uh-oh, uh-oh. See, this this, this is what's going wrong with the church. Everybody wants God to do a quick move. It ain't going to happen. When Jesus was going through to become the person that he needed to be, he had to go through the process. Rejected, be, talked about, spit on, thorns smashed in his head. All these things to say, I'm the son of God. Then after he got through. He was able to go and say, on the third day, I'm getting up in here. Yeah. Why was he able to do that? He said, I have proven myself. Yeah. Yeah. Thought about us. Wait a minute. Yeah. Hold on. Break it down, bro, Pastor. Yeah. Look at your name and say, have you proven yourself? Have you proven yourself? Yeah. I'm trying my best. The yeah. first thing that goes yeah. on in church is people want God to move like a microwave, uh-huh. but you hadn't proven yourself to God. Amen. God ain't going to give you it till you prove yourself. 
okay, wait a minute, hold on, bro, Pastor. Well, why is it that these sinners getting this, but I ain't getting it? Because the yeah, Bible said he let the sun or the rain rain upon the just as well as the unjust. That's right. So the process, when you see the blessing upon them, that don't mean that they say. See, once you get saved, you got to walk upright in order for the blessing to be stored upon you. When you are righteous, the, the, the blessing of God starts flowing. When you do what you're supposed to do, God can't do nothing but bless you. Everybody look, everybody look at me like, bro, pastor, I thought, I thought that God, since I got saved, I suppose the blessed supposed to flow like that. You got to go through process. When I came on this side, I thought it was going to be a bed of ease. No. The one that you thought was going to be your friend going to be the one going to slap you down. The one that you had sweet counsel is going to be the one that's going to give you the most hell. Oh, Lord. Everybody looking like, oh, God. You to my folks in the church, everybody in the church that said they got the Lord don't have the Lord. They got a name, but it ain't the name of the Lord. Oh, my God, but the name. When you got that, when you got the real God, it ain't a form. Hold on, let me break it down. Music going. Doom, 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 doom. You shout like everybody else. You got the woo. Woo. You got the woo all together. You got the hand in the air. You know how to do it together. But when the devil come in and ask you about could you live a life, you cannot live nothing. Oh God. So God, when he had to go through all this in order to let people know who I really am, these things came to him to let him know, okay, you ain't going to just be called the son of God just to say you're the son. Just because your father is the father over you and over this earth, that don't mean that your life going to be easy. You had to be proven. I don't know why we think just because we say that our life is going to be a bed of ease. No, it's not. Uh -huh. That's when it's love storm. Yeah. Lord, how many times have y'all asked the question, when, when, before I got saved, like they were just flowing, like everything was going just the easy. Yeah, but the then when you got saved, all of a sudden, like every hell that can come your way, now all of a sudden you got sick. All things start happening. And you said, God, wait a minute. Before I got over here, things were going smooth, but it looked like everything happening now. When you tell God that you have decided that Jesus is going to be your choice, guess what? The gates of hell breaks open. Everybody be thinking, oh, God, it's going to become easy. No, it's going to just, life just start. Bro, Pastor, I don't understand how people could be so cold to pastors and first ladies. Baby, they just don't know. Thank you, Jesus. When you take on the anointing, I'm trying to help somebody because somebody feel like just because you're saved, you ain't going to have to go through anything, but the devil is alive. That's when it starts. Amen. Come on, first lady. We believe that Jesus Christ is standing now. As a mediator between God and man. First Timothy 2 and 5. Uh-huh, go ahead. John 1 and 1 say, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hold it right there, first lady. Mother Brown, Mother Ben, stand up. No, Mother Ben, sit down. Mother Brown, stand up. Now, you're going to talk to her. Mother Ben said to Mother Brown, you're going to recognize her as being godly. Said to her what you need God to do. You can say it out loud so we can hear you. <laughs> you, you, can get, you can give an example of it because I want somebody to know what we're doing. Mother, 
Now, when you gave your request to him, now Jesus took what you said, brought it before the Father, and he began to mediate for you. He began to talk to the Father. Father, she'd been faithful. She'd have went through the process. It's her time. Y'all didn't hear that. After you have suffered a while, when you become in your a while, then when the Savior see or Jesus see that that time or process is up for you and you have went through it without mumbling nor grumbling, when he began to mediate, then the Father set his, uh, his approval and said, okay, tell him that it's done. I don't know who I'm talking to. That was a prophetic word for somebody. Somebody tonight, that, that word was for, for somebody tonight. God is getting ready to make a move for you tonight. Mm -mm, Y'all didn't hear me. Uh, you, it looked like the last was you, but God getting ready to bring the last to the forefront. You was under, but God is getting ready to bring you above. You was down, but God getting ready to lift you back up. Somebody give God a shout up in here and tell your neighbor, that sound like me. I'm getting ready to get out of with him here. Ain't nobody going to be mad but the devil. Uh, God, we got the victory. We got the they looked at you, shook their head. Saying, I can't believe that you say, and you going through that. You tell him, say, no, what you looking at is my new beginning. Yeah, he said, thinking not strange. Uh-uh, y'all you, you, didn't hear me. Tell your neighbor, say, you just looking at my new beginning. I know I look raggedy now. I know it look like nothing ain't happening, but this is my new beginning. God had to get rid of all my old stuff and bring my new stuff in. Behold, all things become new. So all this stuff I'm facing is for my good. Yes. Weeping may endure for a night, for a night but joy. But joy. Wait a minute, hold on. A night, weeping may endure for a night. Break it down. Weeping may endure for a season. When you go through your season and your test, I want somebody to say good night. When you get ready to go to sleep, what's the first thing if you got somebody in the house with you? You say, good night. I love you. You telling the devil, good night. When I wake up in the morning, I'm walking in the joy. It's morning time. Oh, God. Y'all sit down. Let me, let me go a little further. It's morning time. I need somebody to say, good morning. Oh, y'all didn't say it right. Say, good morning. Good morning. When you walk into a room, good morning. Good morning. Now, yesterday you was going through, but this morning time, that was yesterday. This is a brand new day. It's morning time. Good morning, neighbor. Good morning. Come on, first lady. Come on, come on, come on. Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Uh -huh. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. She was found with a child. A child. Of the Holy Ghost. And this was a seed by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, God, God sent a yeah. seed. Gave her birth and, oh God. Can't y'all imagine you know somebody and all of a sudden they come up to you and told you that they got pregnant by the Holy Ghost and you looking crazy? Especially in our race and you come up and you tell somebody that you pregnant by the Holy Ghost and they ain't been with you, they're going to look at you like, okay. But Paul sang the song, bye-bye, bye-bye. See, that's, the, that's what people mind said. But when that time came, 
he had to explain to Joseph, okay, this is from the Lord. This is the will of God. God did this. I had a, I had a, a work to do, so God did this. So nobody was said that she slept with. didn't have to sleep with him. God did it himself yes, in order to let him know the spirit of God came in and did it himself in part it. Yes. His seed to let him know that she shall bring forth a son yes. and yes. thou shall call his name Jesus. For what? From their what? <laughs> Y'all, my mind is going by 95 miles per hour. I got so many scriptures that's popping in. Come on, first lady. 19, said, then Joseph, her husband, mm -hmm. being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. See, this is what Joseph wanted to do. He said, no, this ain't none of my baby. I ain't <laughs> finna be responsible for another man's baby. No. Oh, y'all know how we are. If you got there and, and somebody, you got pregnant and, and, and you said that was mine and, and, and Brother Terry, Sister Brenda came and said that to you and you knew you hadn't been there, you're going to say, oh, Sister Brenda, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you're going to be talking in tongues and it ain't going to be the tongue she want to hear. You, you, you don't want to know all the detail because that's what Joseph did. He looked at her and she said, I'm pregnant. He wanted to know, wait a minute, hold on. When we been together? We ain't married. And you know, up on the old law, you know we ain't been doing that. Where, where this happen from? Can't y'all imagine? I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to some areas that I'm trying to wake you up. Some of y'all will look and say, wait a minute, hold on. Men, women, and y'all say, yeah, you the father. And you're going to look at him, you're going to say, we're going to have to take some tests. <laughs> oh, everybody got real quiet then. Everybody got quiet. Y'all going to want to go through the test. Y'all going to want to do the blood test. You're going to want to go through the, that swab test. You're going to want to go all them tests. My God, my God. And the first thing that Joseph did when she said that, he said in the word of God that I want to put her away. Privately. Privately. I, I didn't want to embarrass because uh, I know I hadn't been there and I didn't want her to be exposed in that way or either be stoned to death because she was pregnant. So I, I what I did, I, I wanted to go to her because somebody got in my ear and told me to go and do it privately. Don't openly embarrass her and, and we're going to do it this way. But then the Holy Ghost sent an angel and the angel came into the room and said hey I want to tell you something so I know you haven't been with her back you see the, the, the Lord had been with her uh, he sent a seed there and, and when they got through coming together God it produced oh, oh. God is getting ready to impregnate how many of y'all ready for God to impregnate you? My God, my God. Isn't that right? Amen, amen. My God. Ella, you rubbing your stomach, ain't you? <laughs> Come on, first lady. 20 said, but while he thought on these things, uh -huh. behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Wait a minute. He thought on these things. He was a man. He thought, how? I ain't been there. Behold, the angel of the, the Lord angel appeared. came to him. And the angel said to him, wait a minute. This ain't from you or no other man. This divine. She's still pure. This is from divine. I did 
This come from God. Amen. Read, first lady. In a dream said Joseph, uh -huh. thy son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute, hold on. Can't y'all imagine? This ain't none of your babe, but all of a sudden, you love her so much that you're willing to take what she got? Yeah. Yeah. Women, yeah. when you know you got a real man and you got children already, when that man tell you that I love you and your package, right. you better grab him. Because the average man is not going to stand and say, I'm going to take care of your children. Right. But when you find a real man that tell you, I love you and your children, you better snatch him. Before he can get the word with you. Before you can get that word out of there, you'll be ready because why? He has let you know, I love you so much that yeah. your children are my children. That's right, that's right. That's it, Pastor. Amen, amen. He said to Joseph, he said, Joseph, God did this. Don't, don't get her and put her away, but take this woman as your lawful way to wife. Joseph, sit down. Can I just break it down? Now, you know if somebody come like that to you, you had to have a, a long time to think. Y'all think it just was easy, but just because the Holy Ghost brought it? It wasn't easy. He had to look at all this stuff and consider, okay, okay, now this ain't none of mine. Then they're going to ask me a question. How this happened? What the date? What the month? When this, uh, and all these questions there coming in, and I got to be prepared to answer. Amen. But I can hear the Holy Ghost say, you ain't got to worry, I got that cup. That's right, amen. I done told you where it come from. I got the date, the time, the month, and everything. I got all that. And then if they need to take a test, I already got that cup. Amen. If they need a DNA, I got that cup. Wait a minute, hold on. I just, I just, hold, I, I, I just heard the Holy Ghost drop something in my spirit. Some of y'all need a D, DNA, DNA test. Holy Ghost. Are you God, child? I need to know. Do I need to write? Do I need to write and find out a DNA test and find out do you belong to God or not? When you take a DNA test, that test is going to let me know you got to have some type of features of me. Something in that child going to look like you. Six or seven months after a while, you're going to tell. Child come out looking bright. And all of a sudden, you dog, and all of a sudden, that child's skin tone going to start changing. The old folks say you can tell when the child going to turn by the ear. Wait a minute, hold on. Wait a minute, hold on. Let me look at y'all ears and see what color y'all are. <laughs> I'm trying to find out what color we are in here. Because sometimes I'm trying to figure out if you God child or the devil child. I need to look at some of y'all ears because I'm trying to figure out what been going in your ear. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your DNA test is going to be done today. Your DNA test is going to be done. We're going to find out what child you really are. Come on, first lady. 21 and and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Uh -huh. For he shall save his people from their sins. So after this child come forth, she going to bring a son, and they going to call his name Jesus. God had to start melding him to a Sabbath. To 
is not another man, but this is from divine. Come on, verse 8. 22 said, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Wait a minute, hold on. So if you got Jesus in you tonight, look, 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 look at your ear. Make sure we can make sure that we got the right person. She going to bring forth a son. And when that son come forth, you going to know that you got Jesus on the inside. I, I be trying to figure out, a lot of people in church tell me that their DNA got Jesus in it, but your characteristics show me something different. You're not, you're not a child. <laughs> what they say, El Ball? He's not the father. When, when you find a child that don't have that match, you, 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 what you call that child? Illegitimate. So uh, some of y'all illegitimate children. Mother Stock, I'm breaking it down in here. How many in, uh, illegitimate children we got in the church? I want you to look at your neighbor, look behind the ears, and see if that color changes. God is checking us out to see, are we his children? He have did a DNA test on all of us. And the question is, when God come to see is his spirit in you, when you belong to that man or that woman, it's something about that Savior that going to identify you that he's your father. Oh, boy, God, Jesus. Y'all enjoying this, y'all? Come, come on, first of all, I got to go. 24 oh, to then Joseph being raised from sleep uh -huh. did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him uh -huh. and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. Uh -huh. And he called his name Jesus. See, he obeyed. Look at your name and say, neighbor, you got to obey. When you know that God have, was in the planning of this, you got to accept what God allowed. So many times we want God to give us things, but we don't want God to do it his way. God break things in the way that he want to break them. Hard, heavy. Check it out and see if God in the plane. Mind going through. Check it out and see if God in the plane. Sometimes God sends things our way that look like he's scratching us to the limit. But when you know that your DNA said that you're a child of the king, he said, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. If he went, if your daddy went through, guess what? You got to go through. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm breaking it down a little far. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Can't walk out to the flesh because he didn't do it. That's your daddy now. This how your father knows that you're his child because you got his same characteristic. Oh, God. Oh, God. You got the same identity about him. Every time they look at you, they see him. What's the first thing when you see somebody that you know? When, they see they, when you see their child, what's the first thing you do when that child come up? You look just like your mama and your dad. Ain't that what they said? I'm going to break it down a little further. This is what they said. Some father have big head, and guess what child going to do? Some have the big forehead, guess what the child going to have? 
some in the family. And, and could I just be real sweet with this? Some, somebody asked a question, said, how could two buckwheat people bring twin children? Uh-uh, uh-uh. I think I stirred up something here. But let, let me share something with y'all. Let me watch this. Watch this. God would take the two uglies and beautify that child. And what's the first word your friend said? Ain't none of your child. Back in our day, they said, what hospital you stole that child from? <laughs> Is I'm in the house, somebody? Oh, God. I'm, I'm, I'm going in this day. I'm breaking it down, yeah. I'm going to say this. i never forget I was on the elevator. And that was a child that was on the elevator. And the child wasn't what it needed to be. And I was on the elevator, and the lady walked on. She said, ooh, that's a, she said, oh, yes, that's boo-boo. Hey, baby. <laughs> I turned my head. I was trying to see what she was seeing. She never called the baby pretty. She never called the baby fine. She just said, oh, goo-goo, that, that, that. And I'm saying to myself, why did she not call the baby something to let the parent? And I, the elevator shut, and I asked, I said, why did he not call the baby? She said, because the baby didn't have it. <laughs> so in other words, what I'm trying to tell you, sometime in life, I leave that alone. Come on, first lady. I, I got to go. five and ten say, but if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Uh -huh. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Tonight, and I'm going to shut it down right there. Mark that. Tonight, new beginning life start tonight. Our Savior has come our DNA test proved that we are his children. Our features, our characteristics, our mind, our thought process, what we say, it shows me that my DNA, that's my father. When you find out that you're not matching with your father, that means that you need to find out who is your father. And when you find out who's your father, they go on to different types of things to find out. They do another DNA test to find out who your real father. When you're a liar, you know who your father is. When you do things that is contrary to the word, you know who your father is. When you can cuss somebody out and don't think nothing about it, you know who your father is. So when you stand up from now on, I want you to check out something. Look at your DNA test. If you find out that your father is Jesus, the Bible lets you know it's supposed to be a different. Your, your reflection is the image of Christ. If you're not reflecting, then that's something wrong with you and your father. So tonight in my closing, if I was to take a DNA test over each one of you, a spiritual DNA, would it prove that you, that your father is God? Would it prove that you've been born again, washed in the blood? Would it prove that your life is separate from this life unto heavenly life? So tonight, in my challenge to you, I'm taking your blood tonight. 
What shall wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm going to say this and I'm going to let it go. When the person that draws your blood get ready to take your blood, sometimes they get their fuels for the vein that they're going to draw from. And sometimes they use a tourniquet to tie it so it can make the vein stand up because some of y'all could be dehydrated so they can't find the vein. Or they may tell you to go drink a little water to try to get that vein to stand up. And then they're tied. Once they tie, it stands it up. And that person that will be able to find that blood is going to feel, feel, or they will use what that thing? The blood pressure cup, they can use that, or they can listen to it to find out where it's beating from, what it's pulsating from, and then they will draw from that area. That person will come and feel and get the needle and stick in. They don't stick it all the way in, but they stick it enough in the vein that the return of blood will come in. So what I'm trying to say tonight, if God draw your blood tonight, what would be your DNA? Would you be a O positive? Would you be a AB? Would you be a A? Or would you be negative? Hmm. Tell them to think about it. Because so many folks in here looks at God as being something. But are you negative? Are you positive? When you are negative, it's certain areas when I was in dialysis, dialysis the patient couldn't go in because their blood work was negative, so they couldn't go into certain areas. So they have to put so many in this area and so many in that area. But when they was positive and their immune system was able to take, if there was a person in a room that uh, exempts maybe some different types of um, hepatitis or AIDS or whatever, they could be set in a certain area without the bacteria getting to them because they got a positive. So the, antib the antibody is more greater so they can withstand. When you got Jesus in your life, when the devil comes, you got a positive. So you're able to withstand whatever the devil throws at you. Y'all, I got to close. I hope something was said tonight that enhanced or encouraged. I went the way God led me, and I hope something was said in our new beginning class. I enjoy, I enjoy this. Amen. I hope y'all enjoy it as much as I do. Hello. Don't log off yet. I have a couple announcements for you. First of all, on behalf of our pastor, Apostle Michael Wren, our first lady, Sister Cynthia Wren, and the whole New Direction Ministry family, we want to tell you thank you for taking out your time to watch this broadcast. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we're going to ask you to sow a seed into fertile, good ground. We have prevalent one way to do it online, and you can do it by logging in to newdirection4200.org forward slash give. If you're still old school, you can put it in the mail. New Direction Ministry, 4200 Huntsville Avenue, Brighton, Alabama, 35020. We pray that something you have heard, something that's been said, has been a blessing to you. May God bless you. May God keep you until next time.